for later. But is it Friday? Is it Friday where all of you guys are? Is it, is it Saturday? Is it Thursday? I don't know how time works in the other ends of the world. Um, it's Friday for me right now. You guys might have seen it. It's about 11 p.m. Uh, starting a little bit earlier than I have been the past couple days because the household was able to tone down and go to sleep a little bit earlier. So uh, that also means uh, because it's the weekend, I get to sleep in even more than usual. So <laughs> just just stay up late. Just stream for even longer. Should be a ton of fun. We should have a good time. Um, I see a question coming in. Hey, John, I'm kind of new to cybersecurity. I want to know what you look for in employers. Ooh, so that's a totally super subjective question, depending on whatever you are interested in, what you are looking for. Um, question for employers. Um, so I have gone into remote work life uh, even pre-pandemic, like even before the whole world went crazy over C19, right? Um, and I, I think now that I've found the love and joy of remote work, I will never go back to working in an office. <laughs> like I, I used to have, you know, I'd, I'd wear the khakis, I'd wear the nice uh, shoes, I'd wear the button up. Uh, I wouldn't wear a tie. I was not a tie guy. But I remember I showed up to like my first job in a suit. Because I was just like, I don't know how to, I don't know how this works. <laughs> and then everyone was like, guys, you, John, you need to lose the suit. But it does have to be, um, you know, like button up and khakis and looking all good and fancy. Uh, question coming in, no pizza tonight? No pizza night? No za? So it, it, we did have za. Um, we went over to Caleb's house tonight. Um, and we went to go see the uh, new Shang-Chi Marvel movie. It was super good. If anyone hasn't gone seen it, I would really recommend it. Great, fantastic movie. The soundtrack was phenomenal. Lots of EDM. Well, at least the, the bus fight scene was stellar. Uh, anyway, back to your question, WhiteCyber.com. I want to know what you look for in employers. Uh, remote availability, flexible time and understanding with life. Uh, obviously, typical benefits, PTO, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what else do I look for in an employer? <laughs> I don't know. I just appreciate them being normal and transparent and like a competent team. You know what I mean? I want to I want to work with other smart people. Um, or people certainly that are smarter than me. So, welcome everybody. I see a lot of hello. Hello, Mike Kylison. Hello, the Reddit band. I might have butchered your name, Michael. I'm super sorry. <laughs> oh, it's Michael is on Twitch. Dang, I should have read that. That's what happens when you try to stream at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> thanks for your service. Hey, thanks so much. I super appreciate it. I didn't do much. I just kind of sat in a classroom. I'll be honest. But I, uh, I guess I had the ribbon and everything. I had the... Had the participation trophy, the DD214. Let's start hacking. Yeah, you're totally right, man. Let's get to let's get to do some good stuff. Let's do something fun. Um, yesterday we started working with Try Hack Me, and I think that would be fun to continue. Unless anyone wants to yell at me and tell me we should do something else, but I would really love to do it. Spencer, Spencer Adolf, it's great to see you, my friend. Don't think I don't remember you. Don't you dare. You did CyberGuard and CyberFlag. I, I remember it well. You also did, my friend. <laughs> what are you up to these days, Spencer? What do, you, what do you got going on in your life? Where are you at in the world? Uh, move into Try Hack Me. We should probably go ahead and connect to the VPN. And we'll bump around, I guess. Am I already? Oh, goodness. I was already in a, in a split terminal. Uh, I was prepping a video today because I was doing some recording. Uh, I do have a video staged and ready. It's a longer video, and that's why uh, I shared a... I shared a... Oh, goodness, goodness. What did I do? I, I was on Twitter, and I shared a... Well, fire it up. Oh, jeez, come on. Twitter slash underscore John Hammond, which is me. Oh, light mode. Sorry. Uh cover your eyes you vampires <laughs> I know you can't see unless it's not unless it's dark or whatever um, I posted this this poll what's your attention span oh, get out of here what's your attention span cut off for technical content and video demonstrations how long of a video would you watch because uh, this is this is a thousand votes goodness uh, the video that I wanted up releasing is about an hour and a half I think I think it's an hour an hour and a half Hefty, hefty, hefty boy. I can't click on this apparently because I'm not logged in, which is annoying. Also, I was on the news today. I don't know if anyone uh, wants to see it. It was kind of cool. What the, would you stop? Do I seriously have to log in? All right, let's let's uh, let's go to the cam and then just log in. 
I have a last pass setup, so it should be good. There we go. Now I'm logged in. Incredible. All it, that's all it took. What is your attention span cutoff? Oh, so a lot of people are saying like the usual 10 minutes to 30 minutes, but the thick boy videos are over an hour or two hours. That's what we're gonna end up doing for the Mauer analysis one. Uh, I'll probably release that on Monday, not gonna lie. I was trying to think like, what would be the right time to upload a video? Should you do it Saturday morning? Are more people going to watch on a Saturday morning, like a weekend versus a Monday morning? You know, it was a weekday, uh, but I don't know. I need to do the editing, uh, finish it up, just uh, cutting. T it's, I had to record in two parts because uh, I got distracted and had to do work things. But um, I need to finish it and then, then I can post it. But either Saturday or, or, or Monday. I guess not Saturday at this point because I'm going to do this for the whole night. <laughs> anyway, I was on the news. If anyone wants to go see, you can check it out. Uh, I was on CBS today, which was super slick. Uh, really, really flattering to be able to jump in and join them. If this video is going to play. Do I need to mute this? No, it's already muted. Um, we're worried about, you know, the weekend coming up. Holiday weekend. Are we going to see, are we going to see more cyber crime as we would have uh, between what was the Steamship Authority ransomware, what was the, uh, obviously, Department of Energy provider. <laughs> I'm not going to name names in this case. Um, obviously, the managed service provider, uh, like supplier. There was a lot going on. So, uh, we see the trend. Are we going to have, are we going to have more cyber crime, cyber attacks, uh, this weekend? So we're staying vigilant, we're staying ready, but it was kind of sweet and, uh, very, very nice to be, uh, interviewed and hung out on the news. So, all right. All right. We should, we should hack some stuff. We were bantering for too long, guys. So, uh, let's close that one down there. And let's get to NFS CTFs. Try hack me. I'm missing a lot of chat though. What's going on? On the news? Yeah. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. You think there's definitely going to be more cyber crime this weekend? Yeah. 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 With, oh, the question is: This is great, John. Were you nervous? So, uh, yeah. Blades is saying, pretty sure you were on TV here a few weeks ago when you discovered the other virus. Uh, you might be thinking of that other ransomware and said, yes, I, I, I've done a whole lot of other public appearances, um, being on the radio, being in news articles, talking to reporters, um, in CBS and NBC, etc. So really, really flattering. Very, very cool. But was I nervous? I was a little bit nervous this time because it was a super quick turnaround. They were like, John, are you available for a video interview on the news in the next 30 minutes? And I'm like, uh, guys, let me do my hair. Let me do my makeup. I, just <laughs> I need to clean myself up and not look like I'm homeless. Uh, <laughs> but we had fun. Uh, all right, so we're connected to the VPN. Um, and we... Oh, man, I still have all this stuff open. Google Chrome. Oh, you're ruining the surprise for the video. Ghidra open. Sublime is open. Let's clear this stuff out. Let's uh, get back to Chrome. Let's go to try hack me. <laughs> blades. They, blades. Do you, are you someone that I know? <laughs> I know it's a super weird question, but you just said, "Hey, now that they got John on on speed dial." They said that. They literally said, "Like John, this was this was pretty good, man. You know, you, you weren't all that bad. You weren't awful, John. We would like to keep you on the Rolodex. We got you on speed dial." <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you done down the rabbit hole, Jason? Or excuse me, Spencer Adolf is asking. Just knocked it out today. Uh, I don't think so. Are you referring to like the Looking Glass ones or the Alice in Wonderland themed rooms? Because we did one of those on um, in, a, in a YouTube video, and that one was wacky. But I've been working through the offensive path. Okay, we are connected and perfect. Um, at least that's where we left off yesterday, so we finally have a one-day streak <laughs> on Try Hack Me. <laughs> uh, Blades, Blades, I'd like to say yes, I do know you on person, but no, I just follow you. Well, I super appreciate Thank you so much. Um, when, you, when you literally said, John, they have you on speed dial now, I'm flattered because they, they said that. <laughs> 
Hopefully we'll get to do more media appearances pretty soon. I, I, I appreciate it. I hope I don't make a fool of myself and look like an idiot. But you know what? It comes with the comes with the territory. Failure and I are childhood friends. I don't have any issue making a fool of myself out in public. Because I just do it all the time. It's literally my job. Literally what I'm doing right now. <laughs> uh so what are we up against? Let's do this game zone room, I'm trying to continue on the beginnings, the basics of the offensive security path and try hack me. It's September 3rd right now, you know? Slapping a little date on there. We have an IP address ready for us. Uh, can I ping this machine? Yep, okay, looks like we got good connectivity. Let's make a directory nmap so we can just get started with an nmap scan, try to see available ports. I'm gonna use TAC SC for default scripts, TAC SV to enumerate versions, TAC ON to output in the nmap format, and output it in that nmap directory that I just created with the file name called initial. Do it. Deploy the machine and access its web server. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna assume there's something listening on port 80. Yes, there is. What is this? Where am I? <laughs> what a lorem ipsum. A lot of nonsense content here. Fake stuff. Who's that girl? Who's that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Deployed. And I access the web server. What is the name of the large cartoon avatar holding a sniper on the forum? I have no idea. Who is that? I'm going to hit control U to view the source. Will it tell me like a file name? Image 01. Uh. No. What the? Who is this person? Hitman? I, it look. It might be Hitman, but that's not what I should be filling in here. <laughs> He's like John. Play some games, dude. What are you doing? Oh, Agent Forty Seven. That looks like it's what it might be. Now, how would I naturally figure that out? Like we could view the page source and we could look at images, but that is an enter GIF. That is a site search GIF, and neither of these are, are images that I want to be looking at. We could do like a reverse image search, but is it loaded in the style where the files might be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Images, header, header images. Maybe that's it. Are you the boy? Oh, come on. Get out of here. I, I clobbered one of the forward slashes. Yeah, it's this guy. It's this guy. So let's save that image in temp. Oh, I'm already in temp. Fantastic. So let's try to do images.google.com and do a reverse image search. Uh, oh, I clicked on the microphone. Let's upload an image from that temp directory. Temp, and that was a uh, header image.png. So let's see if Google would be able to tell me who this might be. Walter Waugh 2000, or Walter Waugh sniper, is Agent 47's sniper rifle. Ultra. Okay, so Agent 7 must be the guy, and the sniper rifle must be the gun. Uh, but yeah, I don't play games. I play Rocket League. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be totally truthful and honest about that. I play Rocket League and Super Smash Bros. Those are my video games of choice. I used to play a lot of Call of Duty when I was a kid, but I still am a kid. I'm just kidding. I'll be a kid until I die. Yeah, we don't we don't need to freaking put that in there. What is this section called? Task one, deploy. Boring. Boring notes. Does anyone know, and I and I mentioned this in the previous video or the previous stream that we were doing. There is a utility, there is a couple tools out there that will like over on GitHub. Maybe maybe it's a GitHub try hack me note uh, generator or rim notes which is a reverse shell there's a utility that you could give it a, a room identifier like game zone and then it would pull down and generate everything for you like give you all the prompts give you everything for you to fill in uh, this is not exactly what I want to be looking for <laughs> No, no. John, looking for a third and drop shot. I don't know what that means. 
Demon Slayer says, I have a 96 day streak in Try Hack Me right now. I got 90 the other day and they held the last giveaway. Not in a position to buy a subscription. Was really hoping to get one, didn't get one though. Oh dang, man, I'm super sorry. Drop shot in Rocket League? Oh, I see, maybe I'm not like, I'm not a, I'm not a good gamer. I have no idea all the lingo and terminology. <laughs> How do I even search for this thing? How do I search for the try hack me um, room prep? Mm. It's not important. I don't need to. I don't need to go down this rabbit hole. But if anyone happens to know what uh, tool I'm thinking of, where you give it a name and then it will just generate a markdown for, file for you to fill in, that would be ideal. In this task, you'll understand more about SQL, or SQL, the structured query language, and how you can potentially manipulate queries to communicate with the database. So this is a, looks like a classic SQL injection technique, or like the boilerplate vanilla thing. SQL is a standard language for storing, editing, and retrieving data in databases. A query can look like so. Select star, or asterisk, or all, from users where username equals some parameter, and password equals other parameter. The colons here looks like they got weirdly messed up. <laughs> Want to switch, lol? Uh, your hacker mindset with an awesome gamer arsenal sounds like a deal, man. <laughs> I tease. And game zone, when you attempt to log in, it will take your imported values from the username and password and insert them directly in the query above. If the query finds data, you'll be allowed to log in, otherwise it will display an error message. Here is a potential place of vulnerability as you can input your username as another SQL query. This will take the query right, place, and execute it. I understand. <laughs> What's up, Matt? How's it going, M Alpha? Let's use what we've learned above to manipulate the query and login without any legitimate credentials. So the whole gist behind SQL injection, um, if I'm explaining it and some folks aren't familiar, you let the program or the application that's offering you this interface, this website that's serving these web pages. Uh, when you give it input, you have the back end confuse what you provide data, right, as input. You you confuse the application because you start to put in legitimate code, like real SQL language that would interpret. So that's the that's what they show you this example. If we have our username as admin and our password as single quote or one equals one and then two hyphens here, it will inter insert this into the query and then understand that our password has now been negated. That it, we aren't supplying any password, but we're using an or with a query, with a condition. We say or one equals one, which is a condition that's always true, right? One will always equal one, constant value. Uh, and that's what makes this thing break. The ExoSQL we input as our password has changed the above query to break the initial query and proceed with the admin user if one equals one, and then comment out the rest of the query to stop it from breaking. GameZone doesn't have an admin user in the database, however, you can still log in without knowing any credentials using the inputted password data we used in the previous question. Use or one equals one as your username and leave the password blank. When you've logged in, what page do you get redirected to? Well, that was kind of a bad explanation. Uh, for me to try and explain SQL injection right away, but let's try and use that simple inject right there. Or one equals one as our username. Password can be literally anything because we've commented it out. Let's hit enter. If you ever run into DC models on RL, you found a friend. Uh, I don't know who would that might mean. DC models. Did I screw up the SQL <laughs> injection? <laughs> literally gave me the payload to use. Or one equals one as your username, which is what I did. It's not case sensitive for some reason, is it? This password need, what the fuck? <laughs> does it need, does it literally just need password to be empty? Okay, what does it need there? Get out of here, last pass. I think it literally needed the SQL to be lowercase. What the f <laughs> I 
Uh, Astral Voyager is asking, what if they just used a regular expression for the password? Wouldn't that circumvent SQL injections? Um, eh, it, it totally depends. Because if you're still inputting the user input variable, like right in place within the query, you are still going to end up being vulnerable to SQL injection by like concatenating the strings or the data. Uh, if you were to check with a regular expression against the password, that would still work fine as long as you are uh, making sure you use like parameterized statements or prepared statements or whatever other SQL mechanisms you can validate and not just concatenate or drop in the variable representation. I see Blades trying to post a link uh, in Nightwolf, or excuse me, Nightbot. <laughs> I'm super sorry, Nightwolf. Uh, this is a small script for extracting data and creating a markdown file. Ooh, Blades. This might be it. Try hack me question crawler. This might be wonderful. Oh, you gotta use Selenium? That's kind of janky. But you know what? I'll... I'll deal. <laughs> let's do it. Let's 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 mess with it. Um let's move into this. Let's get clone that boy. Try hack me question caller. Why does Gecko Driver need to be executable. You know what? I'm not going to ask questions. I'm just going to arbitrarily run rogue Python code that I found on the internet without validating it whatsoever. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Even though I literally just did that, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Everyone's like, John, how could you do this? All right, Pip3. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Um, Pip3 occasionally does weird stuff. Like, Pip occasionally just does weird stuff when, um, IPv6 is not enabled. So I have a thing to fix it. Or fix Pip install. Yeah. If you disable IPv6, which I think I actually have set, but maybe I don't. Let's find out. Yeah, okay. Now he's like, sweet, let's go. <laughs> My virtual machine does weird crap with uh, IPv6 for some reason. Enter the URL for the room. Okay. Uh, try hack me room game zone. Slap that bad boy in there. Enter output name with file path. Uh, Test.md. This is kind of janky. What are you doing? What the heck? It's already dead? <laughs> it's already not working? Yeah, maybe it needs a dot slash, you think? I guess it, it was asking for a path, but local variable style reference before assignment. Where is style? It's literally defined globally. Why are you using a shebang line like that? You need to do user bin environment Python. Blades, where did you find this code? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not, absolutely not uh, throwing flack at you for this. That's just really funny. Style equals that. If raw, that's in a function. So let's freaking just global that style. Thank you so much. That's super sweet, Jay Malone. Uh, Jay Mellon, not sure how to pronounce your name. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, it's global style. Globals? Glo 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 global? Blah, blah, blah. And let's convert that all to spaces because that's what it needs. Yeah, global variables are just frustrating and annoying, I know. But um, we just did the Python 3 thing. Enter the URL for the room. We'll grab that yet again. Let's do the dot slash test.md. See if it will behave. Hey, the Chiller Instinct. Thank you so, so much. Did you did you see the interview before I was talking about it just previously? Because I would be very flattered if you, if you just happened to see it on your own. This script is not going to work. <laughs> At least not like right off the bat. You know what I mean? 
Maybe maybe I should read the readme URL output file. Do you think it would behave a little bit better? Like take it from the arguments, maybe? Dot slash test dot md. Maybe? Mm. Nope. Still cries. Whatever. Whatever. Thank you for the effort, Blades. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nightbot is being whiny. Let me, can I post it? Or was Night, will Nightbot yell at me? Thank you so much, Shirley Sirius. I appreciate you posting the link. I'm sorry Nightbot yelled at you. <laughs> Someone needs to put Nightbot to bed. All right. Whatever, we've logged in. We get redirected to portal.php. Um, that is what we can go ahead and submit here. This is still the task two. Dunzo. Okay. Uh, let's carry on. They're gonna have me use SQL map now, which is a little silly and annoying, but I guess we can do it. We're gonna use SQL map to dump the entire database for game zone. Using the page we logged into earlier, we're going to point SQL map to the game review search feature. First, we need to intercept a request made to the search feature using burp suite. No, get out of here burp suite. I don't care about your crap. <laughs> Save this file into a, save this request into a text file. We can then pass this into SQL map to use our authenticated user session. You just use it tack R to use that request. Uh, DBMS will tell you the database management system. I might be getting that acronym wrong. Uh, that tells SQL map what types of database ma oh, management system. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> Dump attempts to output the entire database. Super easy, super cheesy, super peasy. Um, SQL map will do it. So, let's mess around with SQL map. Um, I happen to have SQL map, I thought. Do I not have SQL map? <laughs> Opt SQL map, nope. Belay my last, I do not have SQL map. Let's grab it from GitHub. Um, I gotta check up on chat. Petition for try hack me to require template markdown files for answering questions. That would be ideal. Agreed, Spencer. Thanks so much. Yeah, we can get clone this guy. If you haven't heard of SQL map before, it's an open source penetration test that automates the process of detecting and exploiting SQL injector flaws. Yeah. Uh, Boda Flocka says, hey, it was fun competing against your team at Red Team Files. Uh, Red Team Village Finals. Team Yeehaw's here. Nice. Thanks so much. Congratulations on however you did. Um, how does CBS have worse video quality than Twitch? Uh, we, we had a Zoom interview. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. All right, uh, we should be Git cloning this guy. I see a couple followers coming in. Thank you guys so much for uh, doing those Twitch algorithm things. I'm so used to saying, hey, do the YouTube algorithm things, but now I have to say do the Twitch algorithm things. Guys, we're pretty close to uh, trying to hit an affiliate or partner, which selfishly is something that I'm excited for and want, right? Can I run sqlmap.py? Yeah. All right, so it looks like we got that all good. Oh, Butterflock, it took 11th place. Rock solid, guys. Fantastic. Hook and Waffles, Honk and Waffles says, yeah, then we can throw money at you. <laughs> I would be very, very grateful, but it is absolutely not necessary. Uh, all my stuff is for free, but I super appreciate all your support. All right, we got SQL map going. We want to get to the site search functionality after we've logged in. So let's do that order one equals one. For some reason has to be lowercase. Log in. And then on the portal, what the f why, why is you not, I don't understand. <laughs> it needs like the extra, whatever. Search for a game review should be here. Let's try and use the network tools tab so we can just 
test something here. So we can search for that and see the request come through. And now can I right click and copy request headers to get like what it would be? Because I think I should just be looking for like a request.txt. And yeah, it's literally this. So we could just pass this to, um, well, we need to, I guess, get the parameters as well, don't we? Why is that not included in the copy? Copy as fetch, copy as curl, copy as har. What is fetch? Oh, disgusting. It's no, it's, it's, it's JavaScript stuff. Get out of my life. I'm kidding. I have a lot of respect for you JavaScript people. <laughs> if I dare call you people. <laughs> So yeah, we need, to, we need to actually include the parameters here. So search item should be equal to this thing. How about that? Uh, Blades with thousands is actually something you might want to consider. I searched for hacking and pen testing on Twitch a few days ago and you didn't appear. Just did it again and you still don't show in the results. Uh-oh. How, uh, how do we modify that? There's a try hack me section on Twitch? What the heck? I didn't know. What? So once we finish this room, we should totally, um, you should school me on how to do those Twitch things. I'm typing random things right now. SQL map.py, let's do a Python three. We want to use tack R with that request.txt. We want to use DBMS, uh, MySQL, which makes no sense to me because we literally just used a SQL map, a SQL light uh, syntax not SQL map for the comment there. Uh, and then tack tack dump. We need the URL. Oh, I guess we don't know because we have the we have the request in there. So let's let's just use dump and let's see if it finds anything. Boom! Here goes SQL map. Lighten it up. While that's going, I guess we can go to Twitch. 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 TV. So if I search for like pen testing or hacking, hacking, hacking esports, where am I? <laughs> How did I get to pools and hot tubs? I'm leaving. <laughs> FBI open up. I, I see. <laughs> you guys keeping me honest here. What are you doing, SQL map? You're just hanging out. I feel like I have to hit enter, just nudge you along. Yeah, this is the hog and waffles is like Twitch. Yeah, welcome to Twitch. Maybe we should do some hot tub streams. That would require me to have a hot tub. All right, we dumped the database. All right, this is disgusting to try and look at oh we're cracking hashes why are we why are we cracking hashes did i tell you to do that oh i probably did i just hit enter repeatedly um so we avoided using burp suite which is always something that we should strive for in life your goal never use burp suite <laughs> there we go we have a password here that it was able to find. In the users table, what's the hash password? That thing. Why avoid burp? I had to watch your video to get the burp basic. I mean, I probably have uh, unreasonable distaste for it. I don't I just feel like it's clunky. I just, I would rather have more control on the command line or with Python or something. Maybe I am have no foundation behind me raging about it, but. How do hackers socialize? Well, today I went to the movies. Um, today we took the dogs out for a walk. Tomorrow we're probably going to go to the coffee shop to do some work. You just, you just, you just socialize. That's it. That's all you do. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, which movie? Yeah, we went to go see the... Uh, Shang Chi, the new Marvel movie, super good. I was uh, I was whining about it in the beginning of the stream, not whining. I'm, I'm, I'm literally joking, but 
Other table name is post. That's what that question was asking for. Super good. It had a lot of fantastic soundtrack. They're saying, how was the movie? I loved it. I, so I watched Black Widow, and I'm obviously not going to offer any coffee. <laughs> I literally just read Michael's on Twitch, Phil's coffee comment, and then I just said the word coffee because that popped in my head. Um, I'm not going to drop any spoilers or anything, but I think I really like this movie even better than Black Widow. Uh, I don't follow the whole Marvel Universe comics. I don't know if anyone else does, but the... Um, completed. I, I, let, me, let me end this train of thought. The Eternals movie... The Eternals movie, the new one that Marvel's going to bring out. I like. I don't know those characters at all. I have no idea. All right, let's get back to what we were doing. We just used SQL Map to dump the database because of the SQL injection vulnerability that we found in this application. Now we're going to end up using John the Ripper to try and crack that password hash. John the Ripper is a fast, free and open source password cracker. It's also pre-installed on all Kali Linux machines. We'll use this program to crack the hash we obtained earlier. John the Ripper is a 15 year old program, old. Other programs such as Hashcat are one of several other cracking programs out there. I didn't realize John the Ripper was that old. This program works by taking a word list, hashing it with a specified algorithm, and then comparing it to your hash's password. If both hash passwords are the same, it means it found it. You cannot reverse a hash, so it needs to be done by comparing hashes. Okay, so we could use Rocku, the word list, and try and just let it figure it out, right? Let's create a hashes.txt file. And I am running John from John the Ripper stored in my GitHub repository. So let's run opt John run John. Tag tag word list can equal up rocku.txt because that's where I leave that uh, word list. And let's do it against hashes.txt. Uh, I apparently don't have optrocku.txt. That's extremely surprising. Do I need to download rocku.txt? What kind of <laughs> what kind of cybersecurity person am I? <laughs> Oof. Don't worry. Just three minutes left. No, it's cruising. It's going to 15. Um, John Hammond, should maybe add a Discord uh, command for Twitch? I totally should. I need to do some of the Nightbot things. Uh, yeah, I need to add a lot of commands. I absolutely do. Can I open Nightbot, like, on Twitch, or is it going to show any sensitive stuff? And I'm asking that genuinely as a, as a question for you as the as the chat. Uh, I, I need an actually truthful answer. Am I going to offer any sensitive information by doing that? Yeah, when in doubt, second stream. Early should. Uh, I need to move the downloads, rocku.txt, into opt. I just gave you, the chat, a lot of trust and a lot of responsibility. And I'm grateful <laughs> that you didn't take advantage. I'm kidding. I, I mean, I am grateful, but I'm just memeing. Oh, if you by mistake do the API stream? Yeah. John said he watched Shang-Chi. Yes, I, I saw it just today. It was super good. Uh, this totally failed. What kind of hash did you try? We probably need to tell it raw to shoot shot 256. Now we could tell this was raw shot 256 by viewing it because it is in hex um, and it is 64 characters in length. That's a decent indicator. You could use like name that hash or um, hash identifier, but name that hash I think is literally by, isn't that by B? Yeah, it's by B, Bison, who's a, who's a great person. And I don't think I even have that set up. So. Okay, everyone's saying just don't go to the settings page. That will leak your user ID in Nightbot. If you could just go to commands custom, then you're fine. Okay, uh, so you guys can teach me how to do that once we're done this room. <laughs> how do I use this utility? Oh. I can just straight up install it. And that's it. Is there a name that hash thing? Or do I need to Python tag M name that hash? Module not found rich. Why the frig do we not have rich? Totally gonna install that thing. Wait, wait, what? Oh, I, just cause I was using Python on its own. Duh. 
Um, can we just make him a Twitch bot? Yeah, that's totally fine. This is a VM and a web browser, so you have a Kali VM to use within a web browser. Go try out a couple of intro videos on YouTube. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that said, I, I, I do want to just go ahead and friggin' install this uh, globally. I don't, I don't have that concern. So if I were to cat out the hashes that we have, which is this guy, we could X clip that or copy it and put it in our terminal. But if I use NTM, name NTH, name that hash now, slap that in, how do I use this? <laughs> Uh, Python 3 name that hash. Oh, tac tac text. That's silly. I mean, no, it's not. It makes perfect sense, but most likely shot through 56. Agreed. Yeah. Every, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Everyone that's jumping in is like, John, your nightbot is not being a nightbot. I am new to the Twitch realm, to the Twitch world. So uh, I'm publicly making a fool of myself for you all to enjoy. And once we're done with this room, which hopefully shouldn't take us all that long, uh, we can go ahead and set up those commands for you guys. Wow, John the Ripper cracked that like butter. If you could crack butter. <laughs> those, I, I mixed some weird, weird analogies there. Um... Now you have do, 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 do. <laughs> Mr. Wesley Crusher's like, wait a second, John, are you saying that you've never cracked butter before? What planet do you live on, man? <laughs> I never took track of the IP address. All right, so let's slap that in. Let's use Agent 47. Yes. And the password was video game one, two, four? Or video games. Video gamer with an R. I don't know my ABCs. When I was a kid, I dropped a container of Country Croc and it broke. Does that count? You don't have affiliate on Twitch yet? I do not. I would love to show you the stats. Uh, I think I could. I don't know, is there, there's nothing sensitive on that, is there? Let's just get to twitch.tv. I'll just screenshot a thing. Hype train? I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, stats are fine to show. Stream creator dashboard, I think. Here we go. You're almost an affiliate. Why won't you tell me the rest? Path to affiliate and path to partner. Yeah, we can view both of these if we wanted to. Let's open this in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Here we go. This is what we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, crap. Did I kill the stream? No, you're good. Twitch makes you click show before you leak your stream. Yeah. So, uh, reach 50 followers. I think we're well okay above that. Um stream for eight hours we are gonna get super close to that stream from seven different days we're on our way so yeah just a, just a little bit more average of three viewers i don't know if we're gonna make that <laughs> soon soon tm soon trademark uh yeah but then we have to get we have to get partner so if i can make it playing with wood on the lathe you can too <laughs> now that you have a password and username so we're logged in we SSH'd in we SSH'd in you guys are distracting me that's a problem with chat we have a user.txt file right here I need to be able to submit that flag so sorry Hydrogram for displaying it publicly I know everyone gets mad at me I know jamming the music 
Exposing services with reverse SSH tunnels. Whoa, we're going to end up using some SSH stuff? All right, cool. Reverse SSH port forwarding specifies that the given port on the remote server host is to be forwarded to the given host and port on the local side. TAC L is a local tunnel, which means client going to you. Really hard to visualize and, and kind of get wrap our minds around in this. If a site was blocked, you can forward the traffic to a server you own and view it. For example, if Imager was blocked at work, you can do SSH TAC capital L 9000 imager.com on port 80 user at example.com going to localhost 9000 on your machine will load imager traffic using your other server tack r is a remote tunnel which means you to client you can forward your traffic to the other server for others to view similar to the example above but in reverse that's kind of hard to process as you read it but uh we will use a tool called SS to investigate sockets running on a local host. Uh, you could normally use Netstat, however, Netstat is uh, meant to be deprecated on Linux, so we'll be using SS. Um, and then TL, T U L P N. Realistically, you can use Peanut, uh, P N U T, that's how I remember it. Literally, Peanut. <laughs> uh, and then you can add an L now, or L Peanut. <laughs> That'll tell what socket connections are, are running. And that's all you need. How many TCP sockets are running? Well, let's use SSL peanut. And the TCP, we have one, two, three, four, five. If we want to do a sanity check on that, we can grep for TCP. And then we can do a word count tack L. And a good thing I have five. So. Peanut. <laughs> They call me El Peanut. El Peanut makes it sound uh, like a macho, like <laughs> like a wrestler. I want to say from a specific origin, but I don't want to be uh, maybe a little too charged <laughs> in the statement. Yeah, El, El Peanut Day. <laughs> we can see the service running on port 10,000 is blocked by a firewall roll from the outside. And you can actually see that because we are listening... Uh, Never mind, we can't see that. How could you do that? We can see this from the IP table list. What? Do you mean do you mean running like IP tables list? IP tables. How do I just display uh the current rules? Oh, tac list rules. Or tac tac list. Imagine that. Tac tac list. Why? Oh, you must be root. You, Midavon is saying, I prefer Tolpin. Are you just like used to typing that on the keystrokes or something? I don't know. So anyway, we won't be able to reach port 10,000. Uh, maybe we couldn't see that when we were to run our nmap scheme. Maybe that's why the issue was there. Uh, however, using an SSH tunnel, because we have access, we can now expose the port to us locally. From our local machine, run SSH TAC L 10,000 to 10,000. Uh, odd. I'm, I'm conf... Oh, 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 oh. Because you, from our local machine, you map localhost uh, to the IP on that host when you connect to it. If that made any sense. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Rittenhouse just says, I just... I just learned using Tolpin and you're just used to it. That makes sense. You got to do what you're used to. But in case you had struggle, if you struggled remembering it and just had trouble, what the heck am I doing? Attack NFS CTS. Now you can use Peanut to remember it. So there's that. Game zone. SSH tag L 10,000. Going to localhost. 10,000. <laughs> yeah, Rittenhouse is like, I'm going to remember L Peanut forever. He's going to haunt my dreams. <laughs> Agent 47, video gamer. One, two, four. Whoa, cannot assign requested address. Is that just because it's IPv6? Was that having a problem on strictly IPv6? Yes, so IPv4 works just fine. It looks like we have a webmin uh, page here 
which will very, very likely be vulnerable. In fact, I'm kind of curious what version this is, uh, version of Webman, because it looks god old. Uh, I don't care enough to control that for that. What's the name of the exposed CMS? Webman. Yeah. Oh. Well, we did just kind of turn off IPv6 on this host, not gonna lie. We literally just did that. <laughs> we were trying to install something with PIP and the virtual machine was like, oh, I don't know how to network anymore. So we just killed IPv6. I literally have those commands saved um, because I tend to mess with them. Oh, I do need to find out the version. Aye, aye. Um, if it doesn't, like readily display in the um, like page here. Something that I like to try and do is to view the cascading style sheets or the JavaScript files or other static files to... Um, John, can you name more funny security mnemonics? Yes, as a matter of fact, I can. Uh, and this is probably the only other one that I could offer you. If you like to use fcrackzip, uh, to crack zip passwords. Don't you forget the correct parameters that you have to pass are UDP, which you could often remember because of UDP, like the user datagram protocol. Uh, and U can be lowercase, P can be lowercase, but the D, <laughs> the D is a big case. He's a capital one. That's your funny security mnemonic from John. <laughs> Don't you just love when we do Twitch, Twitch streams? Everyone, now everyone's going on. Everyone's going on. Yeah, the big D. This is the real content that you guys wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, what? So, okay, okay. Actually, what version of Webmin is this? Not gonna lie. There's nothing that's displayed in this... Nothing that's displayed in those static pages. So let's check a, a HTTP header. Will that tell me? Out of 200, mini serve 1.58. But that's the server. That's not Webmin strictly on its own, is it? Looks about 2008 time frame. Yeah, it looks seriously pretty old. <laughs> you guys are just going off on this joke now. What have I done? Is it 1.580? Is that what it's asking for? 1.580? Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, um, I don't know if that's strictly Webman, but I mean, I guess so. I don't know if that really counts because it's mini server, but it's not Webman, but. Ta-da. Now we can do privilege escalation via Metasploit. Using the CMS dashboard, use Metasploit to find a payload to execute against the machine. Why not just use search exploits? Let's do search exploit on Webman. Oh God, many, many things. Oh, okay, so we have a file show CGI remote code command execution Metasploit module. And nothing else, supposedly. That's stupid. We should try and write our own. What is this what does this module do? Alright, let's let's copy this over here in this current directory, and then let's take a look at what this thing does. Cause I don't wanna have to deal with Metasploit. I mean, like, we could, but there's just no reason. Do you really think we need to log in? Do we have credentials? Are we, are we going to use the same credentials that we were using previously? Because that would be... I mean... You know what? I'm not going to put it past them. Video Gamer 124? Yeah. That's apparently it. Okay. So. Then we just execute a command. 
with a specific request. And that's it. And that's literally it. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's just code execution in the URL, it looks like. So let's let's try and just let's just try and recreate this. If you guys want. If you guys don't if you guys are fine with that. Okay, so if you guys don't mind, what I would like to do, and I gotta be honest, this is just me getting into like human John uh, stage. Um, I would like to take a drink and then I'd like to go to the bathroom and I'd like to return in like two minutes. Is that a-okay? Is that cool with everybody? Is that totally fine? I'll put up the like leet watch tack n echo. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> John will be right back. Why the? Oh, oh, because that needs to be a one. Yeah, you guys want to use some C matrix in that too, don't you? I got you. I got you. We 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 should start up a new terminal so we can do echo watch tag n. This is important. Like three minutes. Give me, give me three minutes to chill. Screw you. <laughs> the parentheses weren't letting me have it. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. At this point, John, you'd already be back. Quality content. All right, I'll be right back, everybody. I'm sorry. Stand by. Please. Thank you. I love you.
Hey, everybody. You still hanging out with me? Are y'all still with me? John is back. We can remove that decal. <laughs> Thanks so much. I was, uh, I fell, I fell subject to the human condition and needed to go to the bathroom. So I guess that's what happens when you do a live stream, you know? I guess that's what happens when you, when you really do... <laughs> yeah, you fell in, you fell, you fell, John. Uh, that's what happens when we do it for real. Uh, miss, catching up on the chat, still working through the complete beginner module, digging through the Microsoft blog post that came out yesterday around the Solar Winds breach. Ooh, is that any new, like, threat analysis? Any you know, threat intel or details? I don't know. I should check that out. I have, um, the Solar Winds uh, DLL, the one that was backdoored for the Orion breach. That's in my, uh, malware folder. Um, miscellaneous solar wind, solar wind, solar winds Orion business layer. I have it right here. I need to make a video on that. I really, yeah, I know we can see. You're fine. I would be really cool to make a make a video walking through some of that. But anyway, let's get back to what we were doing. So uh, there is, it looks like, from, from running search exploit, as we did, was, was that this terminal? Was that, that was this terminal? Search exploit. When we did a search exploit webmin, uh, we saw that there was one result for this 1.580 show CGI exploit. Um, however, that's just a Metasploit module and Metasploit is stupid. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I love it. It's fantastic. It's great. You should use it. Uh, and rather than using just some off-the-shelf one on GitHub. But let's go ahead and create an off-the-shelf one on GitHub. <laughs> um, to make this nice and formal, let's go ahead and create a GitHub repository for this thing. We should, we should keep this all for real. You know what I'm saying? Create a new repository. Uh, we'll just call it CVE with the proper CVE number. Um, a Python replicated exploit for Webman 1.580. Uh, what was that? That was file show CGI. Remote code execution. Do it. Cool. Let's clone this thing and let's work with it. Excuse me. Whoa. Bump the microphone. A uh, question that came through. Hey, John, have you ever done bug hunting? I have not truthfully done a whole lot of bug bounty. Um, I just I haven't made the time for it. And I don't know if I will anytime soon. I think I would like to um, in the future, like maybe five or ten years down the line. But right now, uh, just not going to pull it off. Checking search spit for, for Webman 5.80, I only saw a Metasploit module for the uh, file slash show.cgi remote code execution attack on that legacy Webman version. This code is an attempt to recreate that in Python without using Metasploit. All right, so if we were gonna end up recreating uh, what this Metasploit library does, realistically, it's kind of just a matter of walking through and seeing how it does it uh, and just doing it in Python. So I will create a little Python script, user bin environment Python. Um, and let's import requests because we know that we're absolutely going to end up using that. And let's actually import arg parse because we know that we are going to end up using that. Uh, so arg parse can create an argument parser so we can take in stuff from the command line, right? As we were to end up using it. And that is argument parser as the object that we need. I'll call that parser. 
And then let's add some arguments that we know we will need. We know that we will need the host, um, and I think that help is what that would display. Help the host of the target. Let's make that our host, realistically. The webman 1.580. Uh, targets and then we need our port uh, that type should be oh oh thank you M alpha you immediately immediately found my weakness <laughs> making me realize uh, forgetting the Python 3 the port that hosts webmen Web, web, webman 1.5.0. Correct. Um, parser dot parse args. Args. And let's just verify that this works, please. Mm, add argument. Cool. Yeah. So we can our host and our port. Perfect. Um, can I make this default to none? Is that okay? So I can check if args dot, 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 dot r port is equal to none, print, let's determine if it's present in our host, if args dot host. Mm, let's do an, a colon in that, just to verify. Then we can do a, uh, our, um, Host equal he, oh, what, wow what am I what am I fucking thinking? Host dot port equals args dot r host dot split colon theoretically correct. <laughs> John, what's crack a lacking? Um, you know, just goofing off. The QR code on your shirt is a Rick roll, isn't it? Actually, the QR code evaluates to the string. Um, ooh, the QR code evaluates to the string installing malware. <laughs> uh, kitten Rizik says, uh, kitten Zizik says, you could just do if not args port, part, port, <laughs> and that's exactly what we should do. Uh, so yeah, yeah, an input, it's just kind of a fun joke. Um, I don't want that to be required how do i so i'm i'm honestly kind of bad with org parse uh documentation if i set a default why would that not use it i wanted that to be optional do i need to have it be like a tac tac required equals false Look at you guys. You're the best. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hmm. Let's make these optional. And then let's use tac p and tac tac port. How about that? How's that look? Conflicting. Oh gosh, you stupid. Let's make it target. Namespace has no argument or port because it is now called port and that is now called target and that is now called target. None type is not iterable. Uh, that should be supplied. Args.target. Oh, that actually needs to be required, not gonna lie. So required can equal true on that. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, one, two, seven, zero, zero, one. Um, let's import sys so we can use proper. Sys dot send it out. Standard error dot write. 
Mm-mm-mm. is required cool and then let's exit negative one cool security live rating with a party thank you so so much for coming to hang out security live and everybody i appreciate you jumping in we're just goofing off as usual <laughs> uh blades says a warning went retreat retweeting uh the pen and don't wait for it to autofill. Understood. <laughs> Alrighty. Happy Friday. Yeah, yeah. Let's get the weekend going. Uh, we've done some decent um, syntax work now. So let's try a... We could, we could print just fine, I think. And let's use an F stream targeting host uh, host else let's add an else in here to make that stupid and dumb host can equal args dot target and port can equal args dot port I think that's fine and we should also realistically add a command that we want to run um, so that should be taxi, tag tap command, the command to run on the target. We don't need a default there, but we do want to make that required just as well. Targeting host on port. Mm. Should we have the colon syntax there or should we just display the port? I don't freaking know. <laughs> now we need to tag command. Let's run who am I? Port is not defined. That should be because I have a typo. There we go. I looked away for three minutes. <laughs> cool. So, doing this now, we could... Uh, we should also probably add a SSL argument. Tac S, tac tac SSL. Um, whether or not we should use SSL. If, um, let's do if host dot starts, whoa, starts with HTTP colon slash slash, then host dot L strip. Does that work? HTTP colon slash slash. I think that's work. I think that will work. Schema can then equal that. Oh, I hate reusing that string over and over and over again, but kind of necessary, so. Schema. HTTPS. Yeah? Else schema can equal HTTP colon colon. I think that's A okay. Yeah? Oh, that should be not required. How about that? Targeting host that? Cool, perfect. So URL can then equal schema host colon port slash sh mm, we need to log in. Oh, we also need a uh, username and password. Dear God. Yeah, you're totally right, Kitten Zima. For schema in, thank you for making me a more pragmatic programmer. Um, I appreciate you. So 
so we can remove the schema and make sure we set that. We don't actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. I don't want to reuse the same variable names there, but I feel like I probably should. Schema type. How about that? <laughs> Will that maintain? I don't even know. Nope, it won't. Uh, a loop scope, please, dear God. Does that, does that? Do we get, do we maintain the schema? No. Oh, no. Type 145? What? 44? <laughs> schema equals schema. Schema type. Thank you. Backseat programming, everybody. That's why we do this live on Twitch. <laughs> And now we need to actually define it. Will that maintain? No, because it's in the for loop. Uh, Python uh, variable scope in for loop? Do you guys understand the problem that I'm f facing? Uh, I want to maintain this. Is there a way to do that that I'm just not thinking of? Am I being an idiot as usual? I could use that disgusting scoping library, but that seems stupid. <laughs> Break? So we loop through the two potential schema types using HTTP or HTTPS. Um, if host starts with any of those schemas, we'll remove it from the host variable because really we want to be able to pass in a URL if we would like to. Um, and we want to maintain this schema, whether or not it was HTTP or HTTPS, so we can use that variable to build out the actual link. We should also try and strip uh, trailing slashes on that. And realistically, we should make the port an integer if we can try to, but... Um, make a function and return it? That sounds so stupid. <laughs> But, but, uh, it seems so unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, uh, Kramers, our Kramers is saying, whoa, I didn't know John streamed on Twitch. So I've been trying to, I've been uh, playing with it. Make a schema, a list and append it. I mean, that could work. Maybe. But that also feels disgusting. You could do a list comprehension. Put a break in the loop. Rewrite it and go. <laughs> what would a, how would a break help though? Oh, just to maintain the schema type, you think? Is that what you're saying? Well, like, because the iterator will live on, won't it? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what we need. Da, da, da. Yeah. Okay. We do need an else, though. 
Because if we finish this loop, it's going to end up being... I think. Yeah, Kitten Riz is saying, I didn't know for a long time that four had an elp as else. It's really nice. Uh, so if args.ssl is not specified, then we'll do that loop. Else. Ooh. What janky magic can I do to retrieve the schema? Um, depending on oh you know what we could do we could do freaking args.ssl as a as a boolean like literally be the index of the potential schema <laughs> that's disgusting that's literally gross This feels weird. <laughs> yeah, Matt's like, how could you commit this atrocity? Uh, SSL, I need to make that a boolean. Arg parse bool. Give me a specific arbitrary action. Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, type is bool? That's literally all it needs? Where's my SSL boy? Type equals bool. Guys, we have uh, made a horrible decision to completely reroute this. Oh, that then that should not be a strength. That should not be a strength. That should not be a strength. Get out of my life. Sorry for frantic flailing. Tech tech SSL. SSL. SSL expected one argument. Uh. I think it needs some other magic trick. You need to, like, tell it action equals store or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Action equals store true. Thank you. Thank you. And that, however, does need to be a string. Mm, does that not need to be a type anymore because it's going to be a boolean? Okay, so SSL, that's going to give us a schema of HTTPS. If we were to supply HTTPS, it gets too many values to unpack. Crap. Um, we need the... Uh, the potential schema processing should probably happen before we try to carve out the um, port. Because that will help us if host that schema. Crap! Args dot target, please. Disgusting. Well, yeah. Oh shoot, we're not gonna maintain the host. We're not gonna maintain the host value. God. <laughs> That's so frustrating. Wait. We don't even need to. What? What did I even have this loop for then now? That would strip it, but it's not going to maintain it. So... Uh... That's jank? I feel like this loop isn't necessary. 
or like it could be made better. I'll let one of you in the comment and like in the chat. Yeah, the original suggestion was to keep you from having to type HTTP and HTTPS, which now this just feels whack. <laughs> But host should realistically be equal host.lstrip schema as now we found it, if it's present. And then. Oh, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. That's been calling the wrong thing this whole time. args.target, not host. Was I just stupid as usual? What language is this? This is Python right now. Well, I mean, that works. <laughs> but we also need a username and password, so. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yeah the, the username and password, um, surely serious, the, it was reused from before for us to target the actual thing that we were looking at. Um, Webman. Yep, yep, yep. That is absolutely required and should not have a default value. We also need a TAC P capital for a password. The password to log into Webman. Cosmodium, hello, welcome. Neolex security, hello. Uh, right now we are recreating a stinky, silly Dumbo Metasploit exploit uh, for Webman old school version 1.580 uh, and just doing it in Python because we wanted to. <laughs> uh, realistically, there probably is some like uh, Webman 1.50 remote code execution. Or maybe it's all just Metasploit. Rapid7 showcases it. Uh, this one's a 2019 one. Oh, Vidath is saying, I really hope you get affiliate soon. I can't reduce the quality and really need to. Oh, shoot. I'm super sorry, my friend. I wish I could do more about that, but I guess I literally can't. So uh, I feel bad. I feel super bad. Oh, you're totally right. S kitten, kitten, you're making me be all good and stuff. I, I should be using an if name is equal to main. So what you're saying, add execution prevention with an if name and convert arg parse to a get args function. Is that something that you would include? Can you do low latency under advanced? Uh, surely serious, should that be in, are you asking me or are you asking Vidath? Oh yeah, for vid, okay. Um, I think we've done it as processing now, right? Whoa, whoa. So now we need to go ahead and create a session, do we not? So what they do, looking at the Metasploit module, going to review it, after they've initialized all this crap, let's just zoom in on that, honestly. Um, username and password. Our port 10,000. We should set that as a default port, not gonna lie, because Webman does use that. So they attempt to log in. 
Is that literally all it needs? Just send a post request with that data? That's pretty dumbo. <laughs> uh, let's try that, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to make get args be its own function. I'm going to make args equals get args. And then I'm going to make a, uh, I guess, a validate args. Mm, no, we don't need to right now. We do need to add a login with username and password. And let's make a session object be a requests.session because we have pulled that in. And then let's grab this for our own uh, just looking. But basically, we end up making a post request to our URL, which we should probably pass in, realistically. Whoa. Data should equal... Oh, no, 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 no. That needs to add a session login.cgi. And user is supposed to equal our username and pass is supposed to equal our password. That should be all that we need, I think. And then that should have a response variable. And let's just print that out for the time being. Um, so let's try to log in with the URL that we've defined, uh, and our args dot username and args dot password. How about that? That might make a mess. I have no idea. Um, host does not match any indentation level. Why? Oh, it's because you're stupid. Convert to spaces, please. How about that? Now we need to tack username. Uh, that was video, uh, agent 47, and the password was user or video gamer. One, two, four, please. Uh, oh, we are not using SSL. Oh, and the port needs to be stripped just as well. Shoot. Uh, question coming in. Hey, John, do you have any interest in working for a large company like Facebook, Apple, Google, etc., Or do you prefer security compass focus companies? Um, I don't know if I would have any interest in working at someplace like Google. Um, my brother-in-law works at Google, uh, which is actually very cool and pretty awesome and incredible. And I'm really, really proud of them for that. Um, Facebook, absolutely not. Maybe. Apple, absolutely not. Um, but for like a big name company like Amazon or Netflix, I don't know. Uh, I So I spent a lot of time in previous roles in a government contracting position that were for larger companies. And I just feel like you, you really do feel like a cog in the machine, like just a number, like just a statistic, just a person to clock in. Uh, you don't feel... Like I, I, I obviously I, I work at a startup right now and I love it uh, because it's a small, fast paced team. We just get a lot of shit done. It's, I don't know. I really, really like working at a security focus company. Obviously I work for a vendor um, and I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If I ever had an offer from Google or like something like Facebook or Amazon, I'm, well, I would never know. I guess I don't know. 
I don't think I'm worthy to go work there. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, Kitten Zix says, hey, I work for a large corporation. I seriously feel this. Cool. So Google Project Zero doesn't sound like too much interest. Dude, I would love to work Project Zero, but I don't think I'm that elite. <laughs> I, I gotta be super truthful. Those guys are ninjas. What am I doing? I keep forgetting. We need to, uh, once we process the port, let's do a host.lstrip uh, colon port. That should make things better for us. Uh, tack U is literally supplied. I Oh, oh I have a tack tack U. I'm dumb. Failed to parse HTTP 127.0.0.1. Oh, that needs to be an R strip. Oh, and actually, that needs to be a remove suffix because of Python 3.9. And that needs to be a remove suffix. Where else did I have a strip? L strip? That needs to be a remove prefix because L strip and R strip do not do what we envision them to. What? 3.9. Yes. Hello? Hello? Why does that not work? Host works. Oh shoot, it's not taking the legitimate port. But why? That doesn't execute. Why doesn't that execute? What the fudge? Args.port is a 1000. Oh, because it has a default value now. I ruined everything. Okay. Now we see a port to get. We've carved it and we're getting the proper thing. I see. Okay, dokay. Have you tried GitHub Copilot? I have not, truthfully. Um, it sounds like it would be kind of cool, but I haven't played with it, I gotta be honest. Those are things that we could do during the stream, though. That's kind of why I'm doing this sort of thing. Okay. Um, now, we were having an issue using this. So, we could do a try and accept here. Because if we were to see, like, a connection error... Max retry error, connection refused, any of these things. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I don't want that actually. And this is a request exceptions. That one, I, I don't want the URL lib one because I haven't imported that. Uh, as E? We should be able to sys.standarderror.write uh, e.args zero, one? No. And then exit negative one. Hmm. 
Yeah. Okay, that feels a little bit better. We see a port and we get a response. Cool! What is in that response? No cookies. Your browser does not support cookies. We have to supply one. That's stupid. Um, cookies can equal, and they had one. They had a testing set to one in the Metasploit module, which is really stupid. There we go. Um, it responded. This, uh, do we have a legitimate session? Response not cookies. No, we don't. Uh, so you're surely serious as John. Where'd you get the music for the stream? So I am a big fan of Harris Heller, right, in Alpha Gaming and that kind of jam. Uh, so he had put together Stream Beats, which is copyright free music for Twitch streamers and YouTubers. You can literally just download everything that they offer, and they have a lot of really good stuff um, between Chill Step, Hype Tracks, Drum and Bass, House, Hip Hop, Rock, Synthwave, etc. Uh, this is currently a lot of the Synthwave portion, but EDM would also be fun. Any of the tech stuff would be a good time. So, yeah. Um, do I need to tell it, like, which page to go to? Yeah, and the playlists are also on Spotify. Yeah, no, I think you should totally play with it. They don't supply a specific user agent, do they? Sorry. Uh, I, I see Mita Vita Perkle wondering about it. What about the set cookie? Well, that's checking if they had a cookie set, but then the request that they send, they just send a post to the session.login with their cookie and the data that we've supplied, but they aren't using a unique user agent, are they? Why does it think that our browser doesn't have the capability to do that? Yeah, sorry, I'm, a, I'm only, a, I'm a plebe streamer. Let's add a user agent argument. Um... God, this is gonna have to end up being like object oriented in all reality. Like I feel like I keep making this more and more complex than I need to, because now I want to pass in this args dot um, user agent, which is like, God, I have to I have to freaking deal with all of this. Maybe the args are everything that we just need to pass in for for different function calls. <laughs> let's uh let's try that just as a test at the moment. Let's use headers. Yeah. You're smarter than me, goon. B build the whole CI CD pipeline, John. Just like get this set up in AWS Lambda functions. Rewrite the kernel. <laughs> Is the Metasploit module even still good? I mean, it probably works just fine. Not gonna lie. I forgot a comma. This page uses frames, but your browser doesn't support them. What? What stupid mistake am I making right now? There's nothing else that the Metasploit module would do. Maybe Michael, Michael, maybe you have a point. Maybe the Metasploit module just friggin' doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Start out. So I, I, I thought I added the user agent just then. Uh, 
let's get a search weapon and the the show exec one is what we want to use you wonder if user agent is getting overwritten that would be kind of weird copy copy this oh my gosh what are you doing try hack me <laughs> run oh set payload unit linux what what the fuck kind of command unix yeah like generic i guess well i guess i want a reverse shell don't i uh python would probably work would it not? In which case, I still need to set my L host, which should be ton zero at this point. Uh, oh, and we need the username. Good catch. Agent 47. Video Gamer 124. What? Did I have the password wrong? Is that the problem? No. Agent 47. SSL is still true? Why? Thank you. Good call. <laughs> Why the fuck is SSL true? <laughs> what? Oh, you're stupid. Uh, you're totally right. I'm an idiot. I'm super sorry. Uh, our host needs to be local host. And our port uh, is still 10,000, so that should be fine. Okay, it just cruises that. The Metasploit module has no issue whatsoever. <laughs> but... Why does ours not want to play nice what is your keyboard name I'm using the Macaulay wireless check the keyboard user equals data store username pass equals password page does that need to be like that doesn't need to be URL encoded for some stupid freaking reason does it because that would be dumb <laughs> Uh, cookie should be set. Testing just fine. Data is passed already. We could try looking at the Metasploit request in burp. <laughs> Don't tell me to use burp. <laughs> I'm kidding. Maybe that would be a fine idea. Let me stare at this for just a little bit longer. Send a request CGI. Is that something different in Ruby? Timeout equals 20. Um, mm. Let's just try a regular requests post. Still doesn't want to do it. What the heck? Could use Selenium instead of requests? That's jank.
Should we? Let's let's. <laughs> Let me grab that grab that flag real quick. Oh, is that gonna terminate the roomman? Crap. Is that that's not gonna terminate the machine, is it? No. Okay, that's good. Airline one nineteen. No. Did we remove that? That had a forward slash on it for the longest time. I thought. No way. Was that it? Was that it the whole time? Are you telling me that? Oh my freaking. <laughs> but. Okay, 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 so now I need to keep the session. Let's keep the session. I thought. Did I have or did I not have a forward slash there? <laughs> Why is it not logging in? <laughs> it, and another question. Oh, no, no, no. It had a forward slash over there. Yeah. The, the URL itself kept track of the forward slash. So there were two. No... Uh, That, okay, so that is why that it wasn't logging in. But now we still don't know exactly what this is. <laughs> now we're still back at square one. Is this like a genuine error message that I could Google? Uh, Webman? I feel like it's not. <laughs> it's freaking old, old challenges, like old service version numbers. Insanity. You think requests is, is it? That's a problem with requests? I guess we'll just Python requests are delay. Is the user agent actually being overwritten? Is that part of the problem? For some reason? Um, we're adding that user agent though. Like in a browser that does handle it. Can you specify, can you add headers? For a session object, like on its own? Supposedly, but that doesn't work. Maybe there's request CGI? There are more headers that I need to add here. Again, that seems kind of stupid, but you know what? Let's, for the sake, for the sake of certainty, 
let's clear the log and try to do a login naturally. Agent 47 with video gamer 124 as our password. And then we could check that request. Yeah. So now let's copy it as curl. And then let's do a curl to Python requests. So we could grab that same syntax. Oh no, do we need a SID or something stupid in there? So why don't we try and log in? Maybe this is all that we need. Let's try and print. Oh God, what the, what are you doing sublime text? That was weird. My cursors were like in four different places without being in one single place. Totally just for testing purposes, requests not referred to locally. So import requests, we literally import requests. How is that a problem? There we go. Nope. That doesn't do it either. I don't understand. I literally don't understand. Crap. Dang. Like, did the music die? <laughs> Probably, yeah. We played literally the entire playlist. You think the data still needs the percent two F? Uh, it says ten thousand on the port. Is that not where we were? That's what we were doing. Belmont Gaming is saying, "What are you trying to do?" We're trying to simply log in to a Webman portal. Nah, it is. It is. It is ten thousand. It is not. Uh, It is not 1,000. But I don't, I, I don't understand why we're setting all of the same headers that a regular browser does and it's still not coming through, so. Unless it was a Python request CGI, like way to do it. But we've done that. We literally have sent the exact same request that the web browser does. <laughs> Time to burp? Oh, gosh. I suppose so. I suppose it is that time. How do I, uh, how do I listen to a, a Metasploit request through burp? How do I do that? <laughs> do we need to set a proxy? I mean, obviously we'll have a proxy. If there's a proxy option in, in Metasploit. All right. Let's kill that shell. Uh, show advanced options, I think, right? So, is it, it's not reverse allow proxy? If the page requires frames, can you look at the source and see what page is in that frame and call that? I can try that, yep. Oh, proxies, I'm super sorry, I'm, I'm Dumbo. I didn't even realize, proxies, yes. What proxy do they run? They use a Sox, f f they use an HTTP one, do they not? Bind a port HTTP localhost. Uh, 
yeah <laughs> set proxies http 127001 8080 is that right i i think so Mm, set reverse allow proxy to true. Do it. Uh... <laughs> VLC, what are you doing, man? You can play all the music. Okay. Sorry. cannot connect to something. Check the syntax for the proxies thing again. The description said something about it. So proxies on its own says type host port or multiple. You think it's just the host name? How do you not tell the port? How would you not tell it use like HTTP or, or, or something? Oh, that's freaking weird, but okay. Well, that's not catching anything because it doesn't know to do that. Oh, 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 you think it's HTTP without a colon slash slash? That makes more sense to me. Run. There it is. Good work. Good work, Lyrex and Overflow. You guys are the real winners. Okay. So, <laughs> seriously, this is practically exactly what we have. Let's change connection to close. Content length can vary. Content type is fine. Origin doesn't need to be there. Cookie, we will pass. Host, do we even need to refer? try to kill a lot of these good work team that's a weird old user agent I wonder if it genuinely did need that that's kind of weird do you think that was it No. Supposedly. Mm. Redirect? Oh, like allow redirects? Is that what you're thinking? You can do that, can you not? You can do allow redirects, set that to true. Maybe it's maybe it wasn't allowing a redirect all along. And maybe we just, no. Oh my gosh. It's true by default, I would think. Yeah, do we need to set it to false? What the fuck? <laughs> Um, okay, so we have a valid SID and cookie, and therefore we actually authenticated, but why would it redirect us out? Why would it do that? <laughs> I, I hope I'm not the only one that is absolutely dumbfounded. Uh, we really need to give absolute credit to Luke Lane because he's the one that they're the individual that was like, what about the redirect? What the fudge? 
<laughs> I thought there was a 302 when you got to the web page. Well, so, okay, let's ignore Burp again, because I hate him. Um, when we went back to this page, like when we did a login, it gave us a straight 200, did it not? Agent 47. Three or two, three or two, three or two, three or two. Um, <laughs> what the F? I don't even understand. I don't, you know what? Le I think I got to admit, I really hope that the whole next portion of this is not going to be that stupid. Uh, we don't need these headers. We just, I don't even know if we, well, we need to allow cookies, but allow redirects to false is apparently what we need. And let's see if we can keep our cookies with that methodology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if session dot cookies or I guess if Sid and then we can check if session cookies Sid actually has content then we can go and return that session I suppose else mm, let's do a Let's just kill the thing. We'll do a sys.senator. error. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the best logical way to kind of keep track of this now because I, no, no, thank you, kitten, Zizex. That was uh, just painful, I think, on all accounts, so. <laughs> Which of these variables need to be maintained? Mm -mm -mm. Let's add the args.username and password here. And args.password, I suppose. Not a new line. And then we can die if that if that fails. But we should get a success, ideally. <laughs> I missed two hours, trust me, you didn't miss much successfully logged in with does it work yep okay You guys having fun yet? <laughs> you guys uh, remotely staying with things? I don't know. We're just goofing. Uh, John, is this kind of what you learned in OSDE? I'm assuming you mean OSED. Um, not exactly. So OSED is a lot about um, exploit development, right? So oftentimes you're still going to be using Python, uh, but you'll be doing some ROP chains, like ROP gadgets, or trying to write custom shellcode in, in Python, using Python to, to generate 
custom shell code. Uh, but yeah, no, 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 no worries, O said. Um, but you do end up creating scripts just like this, so. <laughs> New boot goofing. Yeah. Anyway, what else does this script actually do now? Uh, then we just try and execute a command. So we execute a payload with the SID session. Um, and I guess that's what does it. So let's define execute command, I guess. We use session and then command to run. Whoa, God, sometimes, so I'm using Python black as a linter and sometimes it's really, really nice. Sometimes it's really frustrating. Um, what was that bin random stuff? Oh, so they're using, they're generating a um, random like endpoint and then piping in some things in here, it seems like. But we'll, we'll just generate some nonsense just as well. Seriously, should we create this as a freaking class, guys? I really think that we should at this point. <laughs> yes. Everyone's like, yes, yes, John, you should have done it from the beginning. You're a goddamn idiot. Um, so exploit equals exploit. And then let's do exploit dot run. Um, so run now should be parse args should take its own self keyword. We should return args just fine. Login. We genuinely don't need these things now. Self dot session will repeatedly come along though. Uh, we'll need to pass in self.username and self.password and self-freaking-everything now. Uh, not a problem, not gonna lie. You'll still need login self, yes, I believe. Correct? Is, is that not what I was thinking? Yeah, self-everything. self.args and we should define a I guess validate args well I feel kind of janky using that because I would still want to pass in the args but um Actually, I'm not all that concerned. <laughs> shell ETA? Yeah, yeah. When are we actually going to get a reverse shell on this thing? For the love of God, John. You're taking freaking forever. <laughs> oh, is that proper? Arg should be outside the class. And then when you create the object, the init function should take, take it. Main would like one self in the declaration, please. I got you, boo. Anything for you. Agree with kitten? Yeah, yeah, okay. I will take arg separately then um all of those things should just be in the global namespace then would it not so the instructor would take in args in which case we don't need to return args anymore uh, we just pass it in and main should take that as arguments. So self.args equals args. 
and we validate the args, which will retrieve all that crap, get the schema, and then we'll repeatedly reference self every time, always, because that's the only way. Um, Self.username can equal uh, self.args.username. Same thing with password. Constructor or main? Oh! You're totally right. I should have put that in constructor. Thank you. Args. It should have been called run at this point, so. In which case, none of this is necessary. Self.schema, self.self.self. Self.url. Self.username. Self.password. Good lord. We should just kind of remove the reference of args at this point. <laughs> I think you're still missing the self and the login definition, but that might be it. Uh, let's take a look. Validate args equals self.args.target. Um, self.args.ssl. Do, 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 do. Self.host, self. .host, self Self everything. Why did we not do this earlier? <laughs> At least we're having fun with the music. Yeah, login needed a self. Good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, every, like, uh, that's the fun with, with messing with this is that, okay, we'll put it on the repo and then people can, can mess with it. So, uh, our run function should... Line 64 needs a self.url. Self.url. Thank you so much. You're the best. Michael is on Twitch. Um, we don't even need this freaking user agent anymore. Well, uh, I guess we, we genuinely don't need this user agent. I'm pretty sure. Um, hi, Fire. How's it going? Thanks for coming to hang out. What does our main, what does our run function do right now? We try to log in. And then we just determine whether or not we actually ran or not. Uh, So a one status code is uh, if it's bad. So if we return false, that would mean that we failed, that we were to error, I'm thinking. So how many stuff did I break? Session.login. That needs to be line 60. Self.login. Uh, he also has a password equals username at the top. Oh, thank you. Good catch. You're the best, Aaron. Login takes one positional argument, but four were given. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't need to deal with any of that shit anymore. URL is not defined in 106. Self.URL. Success equals X point one. You think that's, you, I guess that is a little bit more, that is much more readable. Success equals exploit dot run. If not success, sys dot exit one. Fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a much more readable thing. Uh, and did it die? Did we lose? Did we lose the server? No, we still have plenty of time. What's the issue? One thousand. Oh, my SSH connection died. <sighs> 
What happened? The box is still up. What? The box is no longer still up. It lied to me. <laughs> I, I genuinely thought it said 55 minutes left. Whatever. Now we'll just wait 45 seconds. Yeah. Let me take a quick break for those 35 seconds. <laughs> we'll do another quick C Matrix. John will be right back. I'll stand by. Returned, and we have an IP address. So let's get our SSH tunnel back. Video gamer one two four is the password. We are reconnected. Let's try and see if our script will run. Session is not defined uh, because that should be self dot session. What line was that on? One twenty. We don't need to return that anymore. We can just return true. Because we successfully logged in. Uh, if we have a cookie. Mm. Or if SID is one, is that right? What is the SID gonna be? Well, we need to do if SID not is equal to one. How about that? What is this SID gonna be? Because it, it was one when we when we weren't authenticated, correct? Duh, I forgot the coin. Successfully logged in. Let's try and get our password wrong. Failed to log in. Nice. That was awesome. Look at that. Proper, proper error validation. Who wrote this code? You guys did. <laughs> I was just your vessel. Um, now we execute a command. So let's get a random string. Import string and import random let's do a random string can equal a list comprehension of join um string uh, random dot choice of x no 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 no, no. string dot uh ascii string dot letters i think is, is what it is for underscore in range random dot randint uh, three to 12, I guess. So they posted to, oh no, they just sent a URI. Disgusting. I guess that's kind of what it needs to be though. Should we be? Should we be? Uh, they make a get request. 
plus. I really, really dislike that I save the forward slash in the URL variable. Not gonna lie. So let's not do that anymore. Greetings, Garud. <laughs> uh, what is it? The path is file show CGI bin and then a random, then a random string and then pipes the command. So let's add an F string there with our random string and then pipe and pipe the self.command. However, we'll probably want to URL encode that. Uh, import URL lib. Uh, I think it's parse.quote. Let me validate that. Python 3 import URL lib. URL lib dot parse dot quote. Uh, percent parser. I think you have to import it directly, which is stupid. Yeah, that's it. So URL dot quote. And we, we do need to do that, do we not? Ninpone uh, is asking, hey, what are we trying to accomplish here? <laughs> valid question, valid question. Uh, we're trying to recreate a Metasploit exploit just in Python to be able to kind of do it on our own. Um, so let's see if we can execute our script and get it to like ping us. Uh, sudo tcp dump tack i ton zero icmp. That's my password. And now if I were to ping localhost um, count three, I think. And I realistically need to ping whatever my IP address is. So IP AS ton zero, because I, I want to be able to listen for that. Ping that, please. Why are you not seeing that? I'm listening on that interface. Am I not, am I not doing that right? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> What? Am I stupid again? What if we don't specify interface? No. What? Whatever, let's try and listen and then use our script to run the command ping. Oh. Oh, duh. Parse, parse. That's what I needed. Go. Successfully logged in. We need to actually execute the command. Um, and that has the correct syntax. Module string has no attribute letters. I think it's ASCII letters. Maybe that's what the problem was. Execute has no uh, object command. Uh, self dot command should equal self dot args command. Uh, do we really even need to pull those out? It's probably good to do, but code execution. <laughs> we see our pings. Uh, fantastic. Um, so, what do you guys think? Should we try and have the exploit script just host a shell? so it can just get a callback right away? Or should we just leave it as running a command?
we've we've we basically built it like it, it does it now um Make it call home. Like you really, you really think it should. Just get a reversal. We don't exactly know what payload we might like. What start an MSF Venom reversal? That's gonna be hefty. A reversal directly in the script. You really think we should? Oh, guys. <laughs> Pwncat? <laughs> Ooh, actually, Pwncat would be a fantastic idea. Because you can import Pwncat. Yeah, reverse and catch with Pwncat. That would be friggin' genius. Yeah, I think I think I think you're right. Um, we should make a second copy of this though, because this on its own should be a, a, a livable thing. Um, self dot args dot no, no self dot host is fine. I think. That, uh, that message should probably come here. Because waiting for that to return is going to be its own thing. I think so. What do you think? Are you guys happy with this? Despite the fact that, com despite the complete laugh, lack of comments. <laughs> you think it, you think it should work after the get? You think it should? All right. Well, if it should work after the get, then. You're, you're, you're right. You are right. So. Okay. You can make it say executing or put executed right after the get. Yeah. This offers a one shot capability to run a single command. And now let's use a Pwncat version. Now I, uh, I kind of need to remind myself how to... Uh, how to do it with Pwncat. Um, so normally... Can can I can I install this? I can I can install this. Let's do a pip three install period, and it should be able to install everything locally, so that I could just go ahead and like use Pwncat. I should have probably checked out what branch I'm. Oh, I'm in master right now. Okay, so now I could just run Pwncat. But our test.python script showcases how to use this. Um, this gets a reverse shell callback with Pwncat. We we should push this before we start to mess with that. Um, added initial exploit. Get push. There we go. So now let's copy CV twenty twenty one. Um, sorry twenty twelve with CVE. Pwncat.py. Realistically, should we have the exact same code all in here? Or should we try and import this thing? Um, 
because this should this should keep the functionality or like add the functionality to it, have a local port. And it's gonna need to know it's on local host. So, oh God. I hate, I'm running out of letters for these arguments. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think that we should have this build in the capability to have a Pwncat session. I gotta be honest. Uh, not gonna lie. I think this is okay purely the way it is. With that said, let's use Pwncat to catch a reverse shell. Um, and we can use our script to do that now. So let's go to revshells.com. And then my IP address is that thing again. And we're listening on quad four. So let's use quad four. And now do you think this is what we need? Should, can we just use a simple baby sh reverse shell? No, I think we need to wrap it in bash. Or we could try and use netcat. Let's slap in the netcat syntax, see if that comes back. Logged in and we get our call back. Hey. Root. Wow, we <laughs> cool, cool. Let me out, let me out, Pwn Cat. I know you, I know you lost your session. You're fine. Get out of here. All right. Uh, Kitten Zizix is saying, I still really think that get args should be its own function. Okay. I will appease you. So it can be collapsible. That's strictly, that's strictly the reason. Um... Yeah, yes, it is. It, I mean, it, is, it would be accessible, but then we would lose some args, I think, with that functionality. Um, now, let me just get another sanity check to make sure that still works. Looks like it does. Fantastic. Cool. I think we did it. We've got our reverse shell. We have implemented, re-implemented that stupid CVE exploit. Really baby basic, that took us way too long. <laughs> and we can finally call this room done if we didn't already. So we've continued our try hack me streak. We have opened many tabs and we've contributed to the InfoSec world by providing this new repository of the CVE. Wow. Truly incredible. What a what a great work of many men. Many many friends. <laughs> All right, add it to add it to exploit DB. Add it to search exploit. I think we can finish and call game zone done final git push oh oh crap <laughs> you're right it needed that other git push for the um git arguments that was game zone cve that thing we don't need cve punk cat anymore let's get add 
that again, git commit, uh, modified arg parse to run in its own get args function. Git push. Yep, 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 yep. Nice. Nice work, everybody. Thank you so, so much. That was a ton of fun. I think I think we did some great work there, even if it was tiny, silly, simple stuff. I'm going to uh, end the recording that I would have been doing to pretend that we just completed a YouTube video. So uh, thanks for watching. If you're seeing this on YouTube for some reason, my monster can has been in the way the entire time. <laughs>